Good. So, so hi everyone um, who I'm speaking to and engaging with live at Pizza, and hi everyone who may see this on YouTube later. Uh, I want to talk about uh, human rights video on YouTube. Um, as we've seen in the Arab Spring, um, of the 48 hours every minute uploaded uh, to YouTube, a significant part of that is human rights video. Um, and uh, even beyond the Middle East, um, everyday witnessing of human rights violations uh, and documentation is increasingly commonplace. And so my video for Perpetube is, uh, is a medley, or perhaps um, better yet, a remix of video from YouTube and uh, other online video sources um, to show how this video sometimes is very much like other YouTube videos and online videos and made by very typical YouTube users um, and it's preoccupied with popular culture, with music, uh, with sharing and sometimes it's, uh, it's resolutely local, it's uh, specific, it's rooted in, in other traditions of film and video or it's finding new forms. So. Um, let me share this, uh, this medley of human rights video with you. So one of the things about this video is um, it's shot by bystanders and, and by purposeful witnesses. So this is a uh, a video from forced evictions in France, but um, just as disturbingly, and I think uh, this is important, is it shot by the perpetrators. So uh, here Slovakian police force Roma boys to hit each other. Um, and, uh, and it's often also as much about individuals speaking out as it is about that kind of graphic brutality. So uh, here it's a survivor of a massacre in Brazil. Or here it's just this very simple demonstrative act I love this, someone driving in the street in Saudi Arabia. Why would that be a crime? Or it's a simple act like this in Lebanon of, of showing the racial discrimination against a maid uh, at a pool. Uh, and it just shows that, it's, that the video is not just about that graphic violence that you see in, in the street in Syria. It's about those subtle violations um, and the subtle patterns of life. I love that uh, in a video like this from Indonesia we learn about the decisions to go and become a maid in Saudi Arabia. Um, and it's very local as well. Sometimes we always think about YouTube and other online spaces as being for us. Uh, this is a video from another human rights space called The Hub about hospital rights in uh, the Philippines. Um, and then we see the same forms that we use to, to remix cute cats or, um, or to, to remix pop videos taken into the streets of somewhere like Iran. This is one of those tremendously powerful videos from Iran. Or here from Egypt. Uh, this, um, this was an act of solidarity to create videos like this. You know, Egyptians living abroad would create videos um, from the footage on the streets and remix and share it back online. And these images became iconic almost in the moment, like that one. And then sometimes it's just the simplest of forms. This is the form that you run into everywhere on YouTube and on online spaces, the video blog. And here it's Asma Mafus, who many people credit with helping spark the Tahrir Square, sitting in her room, calling on people to come out and do something. And of course, the most basic form of human rights footage dating back to things like Rodney King is that moment when someone captures an atrocity here in Bahrain, the moment after a shooting. Um, or here in Libya, 
leaning out, trying to work out what is going on in the street. Who are these people? What are they doing? And the one aspect that has been tremendously powerful over the last four or five months in the Middle East is seeing how people have overcome the challenges of a space like YouTube or Facebook to, to aggregate and pull together lots of different voices. So we don't just see a single screen. Uh, we see in something like this, this is a site called Crowd Voice, um, all kinds of social media updates pulled together in one place. Um, or in something like this, Storify, uh, we, we see a narrative that has YouTube posts and Facebook. And of course, even on YouTube itself, um, CitizenTube is, is collating together and pulling together whole lists of, of human rights video. Uh, it's overcoming the, the challenge of YouTube, which is the contextualization, the, the absence of, um, of, of, of ways of seeing how multiple stories link together. Um, and so let me just end with, um, with a question maybe to you in the room and to, to people on YouTube is you know, how we tap into those uh, tremendous powers of online video that are around accessibility and malleability and spreadability um, and the way this creates the opportunity for us to see this footage from Egypt and, and Libya and Syria. At the same time, how do we understand what is true? Um, whose point of view is being shown? Uh, how do we know that those images make any difference? Um, and whose responsibility is it to make sure that we have the ability to do that? Does that ability rest with us just as the people who watch it? Does it rest with the people who create it? And how much responsibility rests with, with a space like YouTube, with that 48 hours of footage being uploaded every minute and all this human rights footage? So let me leave you with that question, uh, both for you there and, and, for, and for this video. Thank you.